We want to remind you that we have a new look CBS Sports Spectacular coming your way beginning just from the day created by Steve Pfeiffer spinning he continued but they wanted to check the track and now the front of the field in fact all of the field is coming on pit road for a change of tires and fuel. Well practically everybody will change the outside rubber at least obviously they'll all gas up some people may try to change all four wheels there's Buddy Baker coming in and Richard Petty his old teammate right behind him. There's Kale Yarbrough, and there's a bit of chassis chinning. See the guy at the back? He's pushing up the rear spoiler, which will help Kale go through these fast turns. Richard Petty, winner of 185 races earlier. We took him out of the garages into our working area to talk about what's happened. He hasn't won recently. The well-known American columnist Jim Murray has said that what the Yankees are to baseball, Notre Dame is to football, Vince Lombardi to coaching, and Jack Nicklaus to golf, Richard Petty is to stock car racing. It just doesn't seem right, says Murray, to see Richard Petty without a trophy over his head. But for the past better than a year, since the 4th of July, 1977, there haven't been any trophies, Richard. When is this all going to come to an end? Well, I hope it comes very soon. Uh, but uh, it's just been a kind of a deal that uh, things just hadn't been our way. We went good till, up till July last year, and uh, you know, then all of a sudden, we hadn't won any races since then. And we started this year with, uh, with a new car, and it just didn't, didn't seem to work out. And then uh, we changed cars in the middle of the stream, more or less. And, uh, you know, we're gaining on it. We're getting a little bit better every race. And in fact, uh, a couple of weeks ago, we got close enough when the race was over to argue about who won the race. So, uh, you know, uh, it's been a kind of a deal that we knew it would take a little time to get used to the car and get the mechanics used to it and the driver used to it and stuff. But uh, it's come around real good. Richard, let me ask you something. They say that in motor racing, the most essential element, besides having a car that really works, is the will, the desire to win. You're many times a millionaire. You've won 185 races, nearly twice as many as anyone else. Has that changed your attitude? Well, I don't think it has. Uh, I look at it from a standpoint that I expect to win more now than I did when I hadn't won very many races. It's kind of a deal that's sort of habit forming, and if you don't win, then it really hurts that much more. Anybody that never won a race can't be as hungry as somebody that's done won a race because uh, you get the feel of winning, and then uh, that's all you know, and that's all you want to do. And uh, from that standpoint, uh, I don't think it's uh, the wheel as much as it is getting the wheel of the car. If I can get the car to do it, I know how the driver can do it. Well, that's Richard's view of affairs, but meanwhile, I'd ask Morris Petty, his brother, and also his chief mechanic, if he really thought that Richard was putting enough effort into it. No, he does, he does pretty good. Uh, if we could get him into the garage and he'd work more there, we'd be a lot better off. What do you mean into the garage? Is he late in arriving in the morning? <laughs> he does like to sleep. <laughs> Then I asked the patriarch of the family, Lee Petty, what he thought of his son's driving. In fact, it's harder to me because I'm up where I can see what he should do, and a lot of times he don't know, do what he should do. He, he goes to a different angle, you know what I mean. <laughs> and a lot of times I like to get a stick after him. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what it's like when you drive as a family. If you, if you lose, you get your head bashed in by your dad. But basically, the Petty family, of course, have been a fantastically successful family unit in racing. And they all pull together, and it must be really great for all of them to work together all the time. Field pulling out of turn number four as we're ready for the race to resume. Cecil Gordon briefly holding the lead. Remember, he pushed Kelly Yarborough in those first laps, and Yarborough would have been left out there on the track and would for sure have gone a lap down. Race is underway, and here we are, three wide with Donnie Allison of Hueytown, Alabama. Thrusting the Haas Ellington car out in front. Dave Marcus going to second. That's Benny Parsons in third. Here's Bobby Allison putting the move on Benny Parsons at turn two. Allison going for third spot. Number one, Donnie Allison in first. Dave Marcus in second. It's still Bobby Allison on the inside of Benny Parsons fighting for third. Richard Petty back in fifth. But here he comes to make it three wide in the battle for third. Petty going to third. Marcus goes for the lead. Dave Marcus from Wausau, Wisconsin goes out in front by half a car length. Five automobiles still pressing for the lead. Richard Petty now in third, a dead heat for first. Bobby Allison gets beneath Richard Petty. Now here comes this quintet down to finish another lap, and they go three wide to the line. Bobby Allison looks like he may be taking the lead from everyone here. It's Bobby Allison, a former winner with a Roger Penske Matador. Now going out in front of the L.A. Times Charities 500. Allison in first. Benny Parsons back to second. Well, we overused the word, David, but this is incredible. It's absolutely incredible. 
That, just going through turn two there, Donny Allison and Benny Parsons must have been an absolute lick of a paint away from each other. Look at them all drafting down that back straight. Donny Allison to the inside on Benny Parsons. Bobby Allison, his brother, leading. Back to turn three. The Allison brothers, the Alabama gang, runs one and two. Bobby Allison still coming off that corner just like he was early on in the race. Comes off the corner very quickly. His brother making ground going into turn four there. That car number 15, the geometry of Bud Moore, if it's working now, it could work all day. And they sure, with all their experience, could put him in victory lane when it's over. It is a six-car draft for the lead. Bobby Allison in first, Donnie Allison second, Benny Parsons third in that number 72 car, and then the familiar colors of Richard Petty in fourth. And there's still not room to put your hand down between those cars as they go into those corners, David. Well, Richard Petty was saying at the beginning of the race that his car was working better now than it has been all through the year, and of course, better than since last July, and he's really hanging in there well. Just look at that leading quartet. Parsons tried another time. He has fell on ill fortune in the latter half of this season. He gets up inside of Donnie Allison, but can't put him away. Here's Bobby Allison pulling away by three car lengths. Look at that dice for a second. Robert Vance Allison has a way of getting through corners, which is just completely his. Here's Petty diving to the inside, making it three wide for second place. Earlier, I asked Bobby about his cornering technique, how he did it. Well, I keep my eyes closed as much as I can. Well, he must have read the Ken Squire manual of high speed driving as well as me. I thought I was the only one that did that. Apparently, he read it a little more carefully. He's out in front by four car lengths. Thank you. Richard Petty second, Donnie Allison running third. Here is Bobby Allison just motoring away down the back straightaway with a pretty good advantage. Richard Petty is in second, Donnie Allison third. More in a moment. The LA Times Charities 500 with Brock Yates and David Hobbs. I'm Ken Squire watching a scorcher of a race as Bobby Allison is out in front of Richard Petty. And it's continued almost since the beginning to be a five-car battle. There you see five automobiles dicing with the lead. Actually, we have seven cars within a second and a half of each other. Bobby Allison seeking his 51st Grand National win in front. Richard Petty trying to break that losing streak, which has gone 43 races, the same as the number on his car. We have a machine smoldering down here in turn number one. That appears to be the Oldsmobile of Benny Parsons in trouble. Yeah, smoking very badly going into turn one. Let's hope it's not terminal for Benny. There he is going through turn two onto the back straight. Smoking a little bit, but still under its own power. Trying to get back to the pits. Benny Parsons, 1973, national champion. Allison in front. Richard Petty still in second. Another Allison, Donnie, back there in third. They're into turn number three. Bobby Allison, who started winning back in 1966 up at Oxford Plains, Maine. He won his very first Grand National race. Old Chevrolet is now out in front, holding off Richard Petty still another time. And Richard Petty still using that high line. Richard really loves those walls from Daytona to Ontario. He's always up there near the wall. You can see quite clearly going through turn four how close he was to the wall. Parsons in the pits, number 72. They're changing all the changing the outside rubber. They haven't got the hood up, so obviously that smoke was nothing to do with the engine. Maybe it was a, in fact, a deflated tire. Winner of three races this year out of Riverside, California, not too far from here, as well as Richmond, Virginia, and Darlington. In front, it's still Bobby Allison, who's pulled off five wins this year. Richard Petty trying to break that losing streak. Still just one car length behind Allison. Yeah, he's hanging right in there. Of course, there's. No real need, there's uh, Benny Parsons just leaving the pits. Everything seems to be okay now, no smoke and everything's going fine. He doesn't want to get a lap down though. But he will, he came in very slowly and here comes the field by him. Allison in first, Richard Petty ensconced in second and Petty seems to have no desire to move by the leader right now, David. Well, of course, in the 500 mile race, it's not essential to lead at the halfway stage. It's essential to be around at the end and that's the main thing, hang in there. Here's a couple of fans, obviously completely enthralled by what's going out there on the track at Ontario. <laughs> They Who's Lynn? Bearing Who's Lynn? off, I think. Here's number 15, Allison, with still the one car length advantage in the second turn. Here's a battle for sixth position. That's Lenny Pond, number 54, leading the battle for six with David Pearson in seventh, and Darrell Waltrip is in there in eighth spot. 
you look